This video is proudly sponsored by NordVPN. In this video, I'm showing you some tips and tricks for your iPhone that most of you probably didn't know about. These tips and tricks will turn you into an iPhone power user and will let you get the absolute most out of your device. Let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. First up at number one is now the primary way that I launch apps on my iPhone. Spotlight Search is a great way to find anything on your iPhone, but it can actually be one of the fastest ways to launch an application as well. This especially comes in handy if you have a ton of apps on your iPhone like I do. All you have to do is open Spotlight Search and start typing the first few letters of the app's name. You can then just hit enter and launch the app without ever taking your fingers off of the keyboard. Next up is a super easy way to create a new tab in Safari. The way that most people do this is by pressing the tab icon and then the plus icon to make a new tab. It's actually way easier than this. All you have to do is swipe from right to left on the tab bar at the bottom and Safari will instantly create a new tab when you do this. Just keep in mind that this only works if you have only one tab open or if you're at the end of your tabs list. Otherwise, it'll just switch you between your open tabs. Next up at number three is for widgets. I love the option to add widgets right to my home screen and Apple definitely hit the nail right on the head with their widget implementation in iOS. My suggestion for widgets is to press and hold on the widget and turn on Smart Rotate and also Widget Suggestions. Smart Rotate will only show up if you have a stack of two or more widgets and will intelligently show a widget based on what the device thinks you need at the time. This uses on-device intelligence and it works very well in my testing. Widget Suggestions will automatically place a new widget in your stack that the system thinks you may want to use. I love that iOS has these options to customize your widget experience. It really makes the device feel a lot more intelligent. Next up at number four is a very fast way to select any items in a list. The normal way that iPhone users select items in a list is either by tapping an edit button or a select button and then tapping each item individually. You can bypass the first step by taking two fingers at the top of the list and then drag those two fingers down the list. This will instantly start selecting the items and this is way faster than the previous method of selecting items in iOS. Number five is for the notes application. When formatting your note with either a list of checkboxes or a numbered list, there is a really easy way to indent certain items in order to create emphasis or a subnote. Simply drag your finger from left to right on top of the text and the notes app is automatically going to format the text and create an indentation for you. This makes it way easier to organize your notes and understand context more when you're typing out a list of items. I think you guys are really going to like what we have to show you at number six, but first a really quick word from our sponsor. This video is made in collaboration with NordVPN. As you may know, I only work with sponsors whose product I actually enjoy using. And when it comes to protecting myself online, NordVPN is now the default for me. A VPN allows you to browse the internet anonymously by disguising your IP address. And NordVPN has over 5,500 servers in 59 countries that offer instant one-click protection. I use a VPN not only to protect myself online, but also to access certain content that has a regional restriction applied to it. I love to connect to a US server here from Canada so I can watch American Netflix. And I also like connecting to a Canadian server when I'm traveling abroad. That way I can watch the hockey games that are happening back home. If you want to try out NordVPN, make sure to click our link in the description, which is going to give you access to a two year plan, which includes an entire month for free. Just head to nordvpn.com slash IDB. Once again, that's nordvpn.com slash IDB. And special thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring us on YouTube. Next at number six is creating a station in Apple Music based off a certain song. Sometimes when I'm listening to my music, a song comes on that I really like, and I'd like to hear more music in a similar style to that track. If you press and hold on the song or press the menu icon in your now playing screen, you'll see an option that says create station. If you press this, the iPhone will analyze the characteristics of the song, including things like style, genre, and pacing, and will create a custom station from Apple Music based on that initial song. I use this a lot when I'm listening to music in the gym, so try it out for yourself and let me know what you think in the comments. 
Number seven is adding a style to your lock screen wallpaper. You may be familiar with iOS 16's changes to the lock screen, which includes the ability to change the font, color, and even add widgets. But there's another new feature for the lock screen in iOS 16 that most people forgot about. When editing your lock screen, you can swipe from right to left and see a bunch of different styles overlaid on your image. You can also edit these filters and change the overall color tone of the wallpaper as well. These wallpaper customization options really make the lock screen feel way more fun and lively in iOS 16. So try it out for yourself and let me know your thoughts. Next up at number eight is for the files application. When you press and hold on an item in files, you'll notice a button that says quick actions. Choosing this will show some different options depending on the type of file you chose. For images, you'll see rotate options, converting options, markup, remove background, and create PDF. For other files, you may see an option called optimize file size, which will duplicate the file and compress it into a smaller size. These quick actions in files are very useful for me, and I'm really surprised more people don't use them. The second to last tip is for the weather application. In supported cities, you can see a detailed map of either precipitation, temperature, or air quality. The default map that's going to show up is based off of current conditions. So if it's raining, you'll see the precipitation map. And if there's an air quality alert, you'll see the air quality map. These maps are extremely useful and they can predict precipitation very, very accurately. I only wish that the detailed rain forecast was available in more countries because as of right now, I can't get the detailed rain data for my location in Alberta, Canada. But if these detailed rain maps work for you, let me know in the comments what you think of them. And finally, at number 10, we have a very basic feature that was highlighted back in 2017 when the iPhone 10 first came out. But for some reason, people have forgotten about this feature. When you want to multitask on iPhone, most people will enter multitasking in the traditional way and swipe through all of their apps to find what they're looking for. This can actually be way easier. All you have to do is swipe along the bottom bar and it will switch you between all of your open apps. It also works on the home screen as well. You can just swipe from left to right when you're on your home screen and it will bring in your last opened app from the left hand side. Let me know in the comments if you plan on using this or if you use it already. So with all of these tips and tricks, I can now guarantee that you know how to use your iPhone like a pro. Let me know in the comments your favorite one and also subscribe for more content like this. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring us and I'll see you in the next video.